It's time once again for Western New York Athletics High School Football Weekly. Hosted by Frank Wolf with Dick Gallagher from WGRC High School Sports. Today's show is brought to you by Scroy Financial of West Seneca, the Paul Wolf Agency in Kenmore, CSA Prep Star, the North End Bar and Grill, Cipriano Realtors, buffalosportspage.com, and by Southtown Trophies in Orchard Park, New York, a proud sponsor of the Buffalo Sports Page Athlete of the Week Award, announced each week on buffalosportspage.com. Hi, I'm Pat Scroy, president of Scroy Financial. We've been helping people realize their financial dreams for nearly 50 years. Your goals may include building wealth for a comfortable retirement, protection from the burdens of long-term care, or leaving a legacy to your children and grandchildren. With all these diverse goals, retirement planning should not be a one-size-fits-all process. And at Scroy Financial, it's not. Whether you are just getting started or nearing retirement, give us a call. Plan. Protect. Invest. It's your life. Scroy Financial can help. There are good hands and great hands. Hi, I'm Paul Wolf. We all know that good hands usually turn into losers. When it comes to all your insurance needs, our hands are unbeatable. Call the Wolf at 835-9653 today. Hello and welcome to WNY Athletics High School Football Weekly. I am Frank Wolf, joined by my good friend Dick Gallagher of WGRZ High School Sports once again. And we just finished up week seven. We're getting into week eight, which is playoffs for some, Chuck Fucky Bowls for others, and I guess matchup games for the rest of the clan uh, around Section Six, and of course, there's a lot of, to talk about about Monsignor Martin as we get into the playoff drive, so to speak, for them. Things are getting closer. Double um, A is still not settled in terms of uh, who's going to be where and when. Uh, we know the four teams there that are going that have qualified for the playoffs, and then of course Class D with just four teams. Uh, the playoff picture is just about set down there, but they still have one more week of games. Uh, in those two divisions, in Double A, we're waiting to find out the winner of Lancaster in Orchard Park this Friday night. We'll determine who gets a home game, who doesn't, and uh, where Will North will go, and what's going to happen with Bennett. So we can talk a little bit about that as the show goes on. Dick, I saw a lot of you this past weekend. I saw you a lot on Saturday, and it was always a pleasure to see you when you're out at a game. And of course, you get a hero's welcome wherever you go. Um, so I saw you at McKinley Jamestown. And uh, you were taking that one in. You went to see Savon, didn't you? Well, to be honest with you, I just went to the game because I wasn't sure he was going to play, and I didn't find out that he was going to play until, you know, he got the first cap, he got the first play of the first game, uh, first uh, quarter. But if you look at it, it was you know, two halves, thirty-five zip at half for Jamestown, and they played the best half of the whole season. And particularly when you take a look at Boggs, you know, it's getting better and better the quarterback, and then Francisco Rodriguez. And then if you look at Peyton Olsen and some of those defensive linemen, defensive li linebackers, you know, it was it was a fun game. But then you look at Kyer, he's a man among boys. And he, he made honorable mention last year. He started off going strong first five games. Then I th think he had suffered some injuries. This year he had 500 yards about after five games. Now he has 600 in 70 yards in two games, along with seven or eight touchdowns. It is amazing on how he, he has been able to just rack up the yards. And it'll be interesting to see particularly how he does against Star Point this week. Well, he's at 1171 total yards with 11 rushing touchdowns. And according to our stats of teams that report stats at WNY Athletics, we have him in at third, just behind Joel Cologne from Fredonia Brockton, and then Mike Riggerman, 1557 of Pioneer. Uh, Riggerman, of course, with 22 touchdowns. Now, I have a feeling that we're missing a game or two from Riggerman here in the overall uh, stats, so we'll have to get some, uh, we'll have to figure that out. And, and are we, because I was pretty close, I'm pretty sure that he's closer to 2,000 yards. I could be wrong, but uh, either way, Riggerman's having one heck of a season uh, for Pioneer. Uh, Cologne, I got to see on Friday night run against uh, Dunkirk in that rivalry game. An exceptional game for him and for all of Fredonia, really. Uh, Cleckley uh, is in fourth. He went over 1,000 yards. Uh, he's at 1031. Uh, he went over 1,000 yards the week before. And as and Cologne just went over 1,000 yards on Friday. 
Uh, Cluckley, I've got him at 10:31, 13 touchdowns. Uh, he had a touchdown on Friday in the rivalry game. And then Robbie Penhollow is there at fifth from Casadega Falconer at 10:31 and 15 touchdowns. And uh, he's also got four receiving touchdowns leading the way for most of these running backs. Uh, but week seven was a pretty good week for most uh, of uh, the teams that we thought were going to make runs deeper in the playoffs. Of course, West Seneca West beating West Seneca East. Um, and then, of course, Fredonia beating Dunker, Chittawaga beating Maryville. They're playing the right kind of football at the right time of the season. Uh, Chittawaga in particular, they really only had that one loss against Pioneer a few weeks ago. They've shut out five teams this year, so Chittawaga's firing at all cylinders. And that leads us to week one of the playoffs, Dick. And in Class A, if we look at uh, week one, you've got West Seneca West hosting number eight, Jamestown. And McKinley is going to host Star Point at All High Stadium. Those two winners will meet the following week. And on the other side of the bracket, you've got Grand Island, a two seat hosting South Park 7. And that sounds kind of funny that South Park would be a number seven seed, but they are. They very easily could be a one, two, or a three seed. And then West Seneca East, a third seed going up against Kenmore West. Those are all Friday night games. I'm not sure which one you've got circled or which one you're going to watch. I know that the Spectrum game is going to be Grand Island and South Park. Uh, the WNY Athletics game will be McKinley and Star Point on Friday night, so we'll have the audio broadcast of that game with John Zagai and, or Matt Zagai and John Simon. And then, of course, Spectrum will have uh, the game out at Grand Island. I don't know which is the, the bigger game. I get, they're all big games, I would imagine, for each one of the teams in their own right, but... The toughest of the four, well, I, I don't know if it's Grand Island South Park or McKinley Starport, but I'll ask you, which one do you think is, is I think South Park Grand Island, mainly because Grand Island lost the opener to Star Point and they've won six in a row. And Camp Sionka has been on a fire along with the three uh, wide receivers, mm -hmm. and particularly Justin Garrell. Uh, and defensively, they played very well. I don't think they played a team as physical is South Park, so it'll be interesting to see how they match up. But that, to me, is a game that could go right down to the last uh, series and the last couple of minutes as far as who, who wins. The Star Point and, and uh, McKinley game, to me, is going to be, can Star Point stop Fields? And also, then, can McKinley stop the passing game of Aaron Chase? And right now, he has the, the third most uh, yards Excuse me. He, he will need, I think, 219 yards to become the third most passer in in a season with yardage, and then also he's got 25 touchdowns, and uh, you know he's he, he's close to Lakata's record, but also Cole Snyder is also up there with 29 touchdowns. It's only eight behind uh, uh, Joe Lakata. So I think that that what you're going to see is when we started the season, we said it was going to be the year of the quarterback. Now you take a look at Jake Ritz, you take Cole Snyder, and you take uh, Aaron Chase. Those three was, are outstanding. They have stats galore. There's other coaches that are also outstanding. Our other quarterbacks, like Sean Beal. Last year he had like almost 3,300 uh, passing and running. His stats don't measure up to that this year. But they're winning. They're in the playoffs, and uh, defensively, that's the strength of the Warriors now. Yeah, Keyshawn Beal should finish up with around 1,500 passing yards and another 1,500 rushing yards, which is a considerable uh, feat considering you know the teams that he has to play up play against. So I, you know, obviously Beal's having uh, another Conley Cup type season. He'll definitely uh, get some recognition there, along with. Aaron Chase and Cole Snyder and Jake Britz, of course. Those are probably your top four quarterbacks around Western New York uh, at this particular time anyways. They've shown it week in, week out. I wonder if Value from Canisius will get any love or Frericks from Wilson, who's having a fantastic season. Um, you know, Maurice Robinson has come on the last five weeks or so. Um, tough news out of Clarence for Jake Putney in that right. game against Orchard Park. Uh, I believe it was a collarbone. Uh, so that's tough news for them. He's not going to be able to finish out the season. 
Zach Boys has played really well the last couple of weeks, maybe three weeks even uh, for Kemmer West. He's really been able to find his uh, find his receivers, playing much better football there in his first year under center for Coach John Haynes. Garrett Hinsdale from CSP. Uh, they're having their way with teams down there. And uh, who knows? Who knows who else would enter that conversation in terms of the top quarterbacks. You could even talk about Davion Humphrey from South Park and Cam Sianco from Grand Island as they got horns this Friday night. I don't know if Grand Island, I agree with you. I don't think they've played anyone as physical as South Park. Uh, you've got that Renfro on defense, who's one of the top defensive players in the league. Uh, they're very physical. And, uh, you know, I think they're, they're disciplined enough to, um, to keep uh, their emotions in check and things of that nature, where you see with other teams where the simplest penalty for holding or something, they kind of lose uh, control and, and, you know, it's the domino effect. But with South Park, I, didn't, I haven't necessarily seen that. So I would expect South Park to, I think South Park could win the game. I don't think anyone, uh, I think you can make a case for either team, but I like South Park in this one in particular just because I think they've been battle-tested with the West Seneca East and with Star Point games that they probably could have won. Um, so I just think that they have got, uh, they've got, you know, that momentum on their side right now at least. Well, I think if you look at the opening week in Star Point and Grand Island, Star, Star Point wound up winning the game, but Grand Island did not play its best, particularly when Cam got hurt in the first quarter, along with Jeremiah Wilkes, and they got hurt in the first half. That hurt them big time. If you look at what they've done and dominated the last six opponents, then you get into Star Point, uh, Grand Island, similar, and Star Point wound up winning and, and defeating South Park. So it's going to prevent me. It's going to depend on who's going to avoid the turnovers, what quarterback is going to have, you know, an outstanding game, because it's going to be a fun game to watch, and there should be, you know, some points put on the board. Yeah, Clarence Thomas is running harder than I've ever seen him. He looks like he's 100% healthy. Um, so Grand Island is going to have their hands full with a very physical offensive line and a power running game, and then Davion's got he's starting to get his touch back. Um, you know, he, he threw the ball pretty well last Thursday. And the defense, again, uh, they've got uh, one of the, I think, believe they're the leader in sacks in New York State on their sideline. Is it Washington? Or I'm not exactly sure what his name is, but uh, one of the top defensive players. Well, in, Lewis got, uh, Elijah Lewis got Lewis? 11 sacks. Okay, that might be number one in New York and, State or and, at the top. And he, and he was, uh, I think, second or third team last okay. that year in New York. He's, he's 6'3", 190, he's got tremendous quickness. Then you look at that line, you know, you, uh, Greg uh, Braswell mm. is also, you know, a big lineman, and he dominates on, uh, he's got like 68 ta tackles. You so if you take a look at that game, it's a, to me it's a toss-up, and, it, and it's going to come down to whoever wants it more, who's going to get dig, dig deeper. And who's going to avoid the mistakes? That's one area of concern for South Park is the kicking game. The kicking game, there is not existing. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's like, but the kicking game, for example, wins with South wins with East last week. I don't think they had a punt in the game. And uh, South was on their own 30, and they had a fourth down, and they wound up making it. But it's like mm -hmm. Craig Krasinski doesn't like the punt. There was a team that went undefeated and won a state championship in the South three or four years ago. The, the coach never has punted one time. He always says he wants the ball, he doesn't want to give up the ball, and he wound up uh, winning a state championship. It, it, will that occur here? I don't think so. First of all, our kicking game, for the most part, is not good at all, and I don't think many of the coaches really put the time into nurturing a kicker, and I would be recruiting the soccer players in a heartbeat to come and be a kicker. Yeah, and uh, you do see a number of soccer kickers, uh, soccer players uh, on their football rosters for that one reason. I believe Michael Lisman from Sweet Home is their kicker. Um, the kid from Bennett, uh, they have a soccer player there. Um, so yeah, you, you definitely it helps. It certainly helps if you can get one. Uh, let's see here. So. 
Again, South Park, the one thing that of area concern obviously is the kicking game, which we just talked about, punting and kicking extra points and things of that nature. If Grand Island, if it's a close game and it comes down to kicking, obviously Grand Island's your uh, got the edge there. Yeah. McKinley Star Point. You said it you said it already. Kyer Fields is is the story there. If he's running the ball well, then Star Point could have some, some issues there. If they can't stop Kyer Fields, then they're not gonna be able to get Chase on the field to throw those touchdowns. Right, and then in particularly in the game Saturday with James down there, passing game uh, was not connecting. Mm. And it might have connected in the fourth quarter, but I don't know if it's going to be enough, you know, to uh, combine with Fields to really give, uh, excuse me, the Spartans a game. Yeah, I would, I would agree there. Um, is there anything you liked Saturday out of Jamestown that gives you the idea that they could play with West Seneca West? on Friday night, or is that West Seneca West all the way? I think they can play West Seneca West. The key to me is West Seneca West has the best team in the A's, and they dominated during the season. They won 22 straight games. Some of those kids that played 13 games last year are also undefeated this year, and they, whether it's, excuse me, Brian Ball, or whether it's Kyle Haydich, or Schuer, or Glinsky, They've got so many uh, players on both sides of the ball who excel that I think it's going to be difficult for anyone to beat the Indians in the playoffs. Not saying it can't be done, but Jamestown showed in the first half last week they can compete, but I don't think they have the talent level to be able to beat the Indians. Yeah, it's going to take somebody with depth for sure. Um, it'll, uh, Brian Ball, uh, John Spire. You know, keep the ball on the ground in their hands, and they, they, they should cruise to victory there. And again, with Glinsky and Shire on defense and the rest of the gang, they don't give up a lot of yards. And the player that doesn't get talked about much this year who was pretty much in the thick of things uh, last year was Justin Johnson. So I, I wonder uh, if he doesn't have the numbers this year that he had last right. year. I mean, it's not that he's not uh, putting up good numbers, he's, you know, but he hasn't been the focal point of the offense this year. He hasn't needed to be. So I wonder if that's something they're waiting for, uh, maybe for the playoffs, maybe next week. You might see Justin Johnson worked into the game plan a little bit more if they need him. Uh, but well, I think he had five, five catches it, th th this past week in 93 yards. But on the defensive side, Linsky has, I think, 80 tackles. Penn Hollow, I think, has 101 tackles from, uh, excuse me, Fredonia. Uh, yes, Castigo I mean, Valley. Yeah, yeah. From Falcon yeah. Valley. And those are the two uh, players that I'm aware of that are really up there in tackles. And when you take Linsky and you take Shore and you take the rest of that defense, it, you know, it's one of the you know, best defenses, not only Western New York in the state. Then you look at South Park's defense, that defense is also tough. Yes, absolutely. West Seneca East and Kenmore West is the other game on Friday night. It's a 3-6 matchup there. West Seneca East suffered their first loss this last Friday in their rivalry game. Uh, Kenmore West has been playing better football as of late, but West Seneca East has been dominant all year uh, until this past weekend, um, in which they still played a tough game. They still played tough against West Seneca West. Um, but I wonder if Kenmore West can stop Dolak. No one's really been able to do that just yet until... You know, he ran into Glenn's well, company. I think the key is, is uh, Joe Stewart he had to come out of the game, and then his sub, Cam Cozier, comes in and scores to seven touchdowns. And the question is, why was he on the bench all season, given he only had a couple of hundred yards? But Joe Stewart is an outstanding player on both sides of the ball. It should be an all West New York candidate, first or second team. So if Joe is healthy, and then all of a sudden now they have an additional uh, player that they can really count on, Cam. Uh, that that'll uh, you know give 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 the, give the excuse me Blue Devils some you know a, a lot to uh, play against West Seneca East. And I think you know West Seneca East. The question is, are they going to be able to rebound from the loss to West Seneca West? That's just it. They played tough. They played a tough team. And I think the way that Jim Marino has led that team all year, 
to, to be built, like, like you said, on both sides of the ball. But I think they're going to need other offense yeah. besides Dolak to be able to win that game. Yeah, they seem to be a pretty resilient bunch. I wouldn't be surprised if they bounce back in a big way. Uh, we'll have to see. I know Crozier is more of a receiver um, with Stewart, uh, and I, we're waiting to hear if he's going to make it back. I know that uh, there was concern there. You saw a doctor yesterday, he hasn't gotten the results back, but there's a good chance Stewart will return, and they're going to need him. They're going to need Joe Stewart, no question about it, on Friday night. Uh, he has a big part of that team on the sidelines, great teammate, good locker room guy, and everything else for the Blue Devils, so I'm, I'm sure they're going to want Stewart back. Heading into the Bs, Albion and Lackawanna are going to go at it one more time. I saw them in week two. Um, Albion did a number on them. Lackawanna had a hard time moving the ball against that Albion defense, led by Eugene Harrison, uh, who was uh, nominated for County Cup a couple of times, at least once this year, and definitely last year. Uh, uh, Bryce Pitt, Pritchard's a pretty good quarterback. Elpian's defense was pretty good this year, too. They didn't give up a whole heck of a lot of points. And they've beaten a number of good teams this year, including Ole and then Lackawanna earlier in the season. So that's a 1-8 matchup. They play Friday night in Albion. Cheektowaga Dunkirk. Cheektowaga, since the Pioneer game, has been playing on another level. Again, we mentioned earlier how they have the five shutouts. Dunkirk, they didn't look great to me last week against Fredonia. They looked okay. Um, if Cleckley's not going, they're going to have a hard time moving the football I, against Chitawaga. I, I, I think this game, when you take a look at Chitawaga's defense, and particularly with Taiwan uh, Smith not being able to play, it hurts them. It hurts really them big, big time, particularly offensively. And if you don't have uh, multiple offensive schemes against Chitawaga, you're going to have a tough time beating them. And I think the Warriors, particularly when you look at Mike Bat and what their record is, what they've done in the last four. Four years, that, it, that that to me, the Warriors would be the favorite in that game. I would have to agree. I, I give, I definitely give Dunkirk a chance if Cluckley can get going and that offensive line can can give him the uh, the room to move, and he can find some green light. Uh, I like Dunkirk's run game for sure, and their quarterback isn't bad. Uh, Messina's not a bad quarterback down there. Uh, just has a hard time getting uh, receivers open to make plays down there. Maybe they can try some short uh, screen passes or something, shorten it up a little bit, but we'll have to see what Dunkirk wants to do. It's still a very tough team. Don't get me wrong. They're a tough team. But uh, the way Chitawaga can can do things with Keyshawn Beal, running the ball, throwing the ball, Bass is an exceptional receiver, and then defensively they're tough, extremely tough. So Chitawaga, will have the, or Dunkirk's going to have their hands full. It's a 4-5 matchup at Chitawaga on Friday night. Fredonia Brockton, a two seed, taking on Maryvale, a seven seed. I did see the Fredonia Dunkirk game last week, and I know Cologne is an exceptional running back, but to me, the best player on the field that day was uh, that Skinner kid, Jacob Skinner. And he's a kid that I wish more people knew about. Um, and Cologne's getting a lot of attention, and rightfully so, because he is putting up the numbers, and he is a quality running back. He really is. Um, Maryvale, though, has Rashad Law. And a lot of times, whenever Maryvale is on the field, I don't care who they're playing, Rashad Law is usually one of the top one or two players on the field whenever he takes the field. He is that good. So for Fredonia Brockton, it's going to it's gonna be about stopping Rashad Law on, uh, on Friday. If Fredonia Brockton wants, because it's a 2 7 matchup, but it could be, it's just like Grand Island South Park to me. You know, you could swap that around real easily. Uh, it's very, you know, Maryville could be a two, and Fredonia Brockton could very easily be a seven. Well, the key to that game also is Connor Desiderio. Yeah. He hasn't put up a lot of numbers this year, but if he manages the game and being able to make some completions and get the wide receivers, but they, their defense, particularly their defensive line linebackers, is outstanding. But when you look at Jake Skinner, <coughs> excuse me, not only is he a good tight end, but he's also – a steady linebacker. He's, he's only a junior. He's six four, two, you know, two ten or whatever, and he, he's got a wonderful future ahead of him. And you're right; he's been under the radar screen, but he's not going to be under the radar no. screen in the playoffs. I'll tell you what; he's, I would say, he's a top three, top five wide receiver in Western New York. He's such a big target, very reliable hands, uh, and a good runner. Um, they're going to have their hand. Maryville's going to have their hands full with him. 
Um, but I would like I would I don't think we've seen the best of Connor Desiderio this year. I think he's got a lot more left in him. So I would be surprised I would be surprised if Murray Vale didn't advance. Um, I just think that they have more a few more playmakers than Fernando, but we'll see. That Fernando defense is no joke either. You know, they they're a very tough defense to play against. Um, are they as good as Pioneer's defense? We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. This is, uh, you know, Pioneer did a number on Maryvale in the second half uh, when they played. So I'd be, I'm very interested to see how, see this game, and I think I'm going to head down there for that one. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Fredonia Brockton upset Maryvale. And I agree with you when you look at the, the, the rankings, 2-7, or, uh, it, it, you know, you could just reverse it. Yeah. Yeah. How about Pioneer Olean? The three six matchup. Olean's been a little inconsistent this year. They've shown at times that they looked very good and other times they just didn't look like they belonged. Well last, the last field week they show they belong by coming back and beating Lackawanna. Yes. Two weeks ago <clears throat> they showed they don't belong by losing to Salamanca a class D team. Yes. Twenty four to twelve, which made no sense whatsoever and then to come back and beat Lackawanna, the key to Olean is, uh, is Alec Wheatfield on both sides of the ball. They're going to need a huge game from him, but I just don't think they're uh, going to be able to match up with the defense of Pioneer and Riegerman. Riegerman, to me, is special and has got to be one of the leading candidates for Player of the Year. The kid never quits, never kid never comes off the field, and he's just fun to watch. And the thing I like about Pioneer and Riegerman you know, first quarter, it doesn't, doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot. I mean, he looks like a big, tough runner. And then the second quarter comes, and those two- and three-yard gains turn into four- and seven-yard gains. And the third quarter comes. Those four- and seven-yard gains turn into eight- and ten-yard gains. And then the fourth quarter's there. Next thing you know, he's scoring two or three touchdowns of 30 yards or more. So Riggerman and specifically that pioneer offensive line, they wear you down. And I think that's where – that's their strength. Obviously, is their offensive line and Riggerman wearing you down and playing the full four quarters, and that's probably where they outlast a team like Olean and why they're such a threat this year to win B overall. Particularly, Trevor Smith, the defensive lineman senior, he's outstanding for Pioneer and Denton Tilly. He's only a junior, about six six four, six five, three two hundred and fifty pounds. He's only a junior, and uh, he'll he'll both of those. Probably will will make all West New York team uh, somewhere. I don't know what the weather's supposed to be like exactly on Friday. I'm hearing it could be some rain. Well, what I'm hearing is supposed to be going down to 20 or 30. Yeah. So I think besides the rain, if the rain comes along with going down to 30 or 20, that changes the dynamic. It does. And that's where, and I'll go back to it real quick, the Fredonia game playing down in the Orange Bowl, uh, that could be, that's definitely going to work in their favor. If it's if the weather gets too cold and and, and a sloppy field, I think that fits Fredonia more than it does Maryville. That, that that'll be interesting, but it's you know we've had good weather pretty much all throughout yeah. the season. Yeah, except for that one week, week four or week five it was. But we were, and that was only I mean that was Friday, Saturday games where you know yeah. played, you know it didn't rain, but when you come down to crunch time. And this is crunch time because if you win three more games, you're sectional championship. If you win th six more games, you're a state champion. And when you take a look, do we have some teams that can compete for state championships? Definitely. But in order to win a state championship, the kids today have to understand to move along in the playoffs, they have to play the best game they ever played each and every game. And if they don't take their game, to another height than the previous game, they're going to be on the outside looking in. Certainly. There's no more easy games. If there ever was an easy game, that happened weeks ago. Because right now, you're getting the best of the best. Yeah. You, you know, everyone's pumped up for playoffs. And for a lot of these kids, they know it's their last, it could be their last high school game. So they're going to leave it all out on the field. And I, I like to say it's prime time, it's show time, <laughs> it's game time. And it's your time, basically, the players. Absolutely. Absolutely. Class C. Cleve Hill, <coughs> the number one seed, will be taking on uh, the four seed from C South. 
uh, Chautauqua Lake, and that'll be played on Saturday, and it will be played at Cleve Hill. There was talk that they might be playing over at Chictawaga, but uh, Ken still confirmed in an email today that Cleve Hill is the site for that particular game on Saturday, the only Saturday game for the playoffs for this particular weekend. Um, Cleve Hill, Chautauqua Lake. Interesting matchup. I thought Chautauqua Lake, um, they've been a little inconsistent this year. Not like Olean, but um, they have the offensive weapons. They have a great coaching staff. And you know they're a tough team, uh, but I, I, they've left. Uh, I think they've left a little bit out there. I think there's more to them than what we've seen. But can they stop that Cleve Hill running game? I don't think so. When you take a look at, excuse mm -hmm. me, both. I think uh, Whaler has 18 touchdowns and 900 and 33 yards, 90, you know, somewhere around there. And Javon Thomas has. 940 yards and 12 touchdowns. So you're going to have both of those players rushing for 1,000 yards. Then you have Chris Diem, who's an outstanding defensive back. He's got 66 tackles. Then the line is much better going into game eight than it was in the first couple of weeks. So with their speed, along with the Mario Grant, I just don't see uh, that being an upset. Yeah, I agree with you. And you know, Glenn Graham, I, I believe he's a defensive coach first. You know, he's made his made a name for himself as a defensive coordinator uh, throughout Western New York. <clears throat> Great coach in his own right. But he's one of those guys that's like, you know what, until you stop our run, why should we do anything different? Well, Denny Mason has been the mm -hmm. offensive coordinator, former head coach at Cleveland Hill, and I think he's been there for 30, 40 years. He's, he's like a dinosaur. But he's there every game, and he knows if you have a strength, use it. And I don't even remember the the uh, game that I saw, Cleveland Hill against uh, Wilson. Wilson. That I don't think that they threw a pass. And if you look at their passing, if they threw five passes a game, why? Because you 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 got three runners, Demario Grant and uh, excuse me, Thomas and Whaler. Along with Diem, the defensive player, those four won a state championship, and the, I think the 440 at the state. Yeah. And it just showed, the, demonstrated their speed. Then also, Whaler was quarterback for a while this season. Now, Javon Thomas is, which is going to open up with the bowl, which uh, Whaler represents. Once he gets out there, he's not only fast, yeah. he's thick around the legs, hard to talk. So. A lot of kids try to tackle him, and they bounce off. With Thomas, Thomas has two gears, fast and faster. <laughs> and when you're looking at him playing a game, once he gets a yard in front of you, you're done. And what I like about Coach Graham is he's not trying to reinvent the wheel, and he, he's not trying to outthink you. He know, He's showing you what he's going to do. He doesn't, out, he doesn't try to outcoach you. Um, he doesn't have to. I mean, he puts all his cards out there where I think a lot of coaches get into trouble. They'll, they'll start one form of – they'll, they'll rely on one player for the first few plays or maybe the first few series. They'll try this, try that. And, you know, they give up on it too soon. I think they give up on a lot of their players too soon. Is it? But Glenn, is you know, do you notice that at all, or is it, am I crazy? No, no, no. But, you know, a lot of coaches do different things. But Glenn, he's been around for 19 years, I believe, as head coach at Cleveland Hill. But he also has over 100 wins. You don't get over 100 wins by not being a good coach and having out the coaching staff. And so if you look at their coaching staff, and you get Chad Curris along with Eddie Mason along with Glenn Graham, it doesn't get any better. The kids trust them. They trust the kids. All they do is win. Yeah. yeah I just I, Some of the games I've seen uh, this year, past years, where coaches had the horses and they just um, – pulled away from the original game plan, made, made the wrong adjustments, they outthink themselves, they try to outthink the coach, whereas a coach like Graham says, this is what we have. This is our strength. Stop it. And until you do, I'm not changing. Why would he? And one of the things, in, in, to go from talking about you know the C game to the double A, but to me, if I'm coaching Dylan Kelly, I'm giving him 12 to 15 touches every game. I'm not giving him three touches by throwing him three passes. Um, he's the fastest, he's going to be one of the fastest kids on 
The North End Bar and Grill in Kenmore is the perfect place for friends to get together. Enjoy a great menu that includes all the local favorites like wings, roast beef on weck, and the best Friday fish fry in town. Serving daily specials like spaghetti and meatballs, flavorful hamburgers and barbecued ribs, and enjoy 12 beers on tap, including IPAs. The North End Bar and Grill, located at 2692 Elmwood Avenue near Girard. To order takeout or to reserve a table, give us a call at 877-9000 or visit us on the web at North End bar and grill.com today's show is brought to you by scroy financial of west seneca the paul wolf agency in kenmore csa prep star the north end bar and grill cipriano realtors buffalo sports page.com and by southtown trophies in orchard park new york a proud sponsor of the buffalo sports page athlete of the week award announced each week on buffalo sports page.com 